Today we're going over EMT fittings. What does EMT stand for? EMT stands for electrical metallic tubing. So as you see on the table, these fittings will be explained today. The first um, row here, we have electrical metallic tubing couplings. So EMT couplings. Now there's two different types you're looking at. So if you look at the physical characteristics, this one has some raised ridges, this one's smooth. So right here with the raised ridges, this is a zinc die cast coupling, but it's a set screw coupling. And where it gets its name from is that there's screws here, which we would use a screwdriver to set the screws in so that it tightly fits against the EMT tubing, right? the electrical metallic tubing. So we range in sizes in these fittings from half inch up to four inch. So once again, this one here can be established by the outside uh, raised ridges, the set screws. It is a zinc die cast, whereas its close neighbor here, this is a steel set screw coupling. So when we're looking at these couplings, we say to ourselves, why would I choose one over the other? When choosing your couplings, uh, the make of it, whether it's a zinc die cast or steel, there's factors to look at. Uh, most commonly, everything has to do with price, so they look at that. But the die cast is used primarily down by coastal areas, not outside. It's still used inside, but coastal areas, the salt water, uh, it tends to corrode the fittings faster. So die cast would help with that. So once again, zinc die cast, set screw coupling, uh, used to join two raceways together. So if they're extending their raceway, they would use the coupling. Um, once again, with the steel, it is still a set screw coupling, um, used once again to join two raceways together. Both of these are sold from half inch all the way up until four inch. Compression couplings are used uh, on EMT as well. These are used in damp locations as well as dry. So these two fittings we're looking at here, you notice it has uh, multiple ends to it. So if you look at it, it's a labor saving device because all they have to do is slide their raceway in and then use channel locks to tighten down the end bushings. So that's important because you don't want to be spending a lot of time on a job site taking it apart. So an EMT compression coupling is required if it's going to be used in a damp location or dry. The advantages of using this, because it is more expensive, the advantage of using this is that it's a tighter, sturdier connection. So if a raceway is subject to vibration moving around, it will hold it tighter and it will make sure it doesn't come apart. So that's a major advantage. So these are good for dry and damp. Now as we look right back here, this is the um, steel. So the steel works very similar, but now when we talk about a damp or wet location, we have to look closely because there's writing directly on the fittings. Now, if I pick this one up here, this is a steel compression coupling. This can be used in a damp or dry location, but it's not suitable for wet, and it doesn't say it anywhere on it. Whereas its neighbor here on the table, this one actually is listed for a rain tight situation, which means it's good for a wet location. So that's inside or outside. So very important distinction. So if we look here on the inside, it has a, a gland which keeps the water from entering the raceway. So the tighter we make the end bushings, the tighter that gland gets, preventing the water from getting in. That's a key characteristic here. Um, so in the family of compression couplings, we have the zinc die cast and we have the steel. Within that, you have ones that are suitable for just the damp and dry locations, and then you have others that are listed for rain tight or wet locations. So either look for the markings on the um, fitting itself or on the, uh, the box. Okay, I wanna demonstrate how to use the EMT set screw coupling. So I have two pieces of conduit here and I would use it to join it. So as I slide it on, then slide the other raceway in, and then as the name says, it's a set screw. I have to tighten the set screws so they secure tightly to the raceway. It's important to make sure you tighten down uh, very well in the field because that is your grounding connection. So as you see, the EMT coupling is used to join two raceways together to extend it. Next, I will show you how to install an EMT compression coupling. And as mentioned before, we don't have to remove the end. We just have to loosen it and then slide the raceway in. But now when we go ahead to tighten it, I have to use a channel lock. Simply take it here and tighten it down. Okay. 
And then on the other side, place the raceway in, loosen it, and you would take it, tighten it by hand at first, and then you'd want to use your channel locks to securely fasten it. Making sure you tighten it all the way is very important because that just stands by the reason we use it so that in a situation of vibration, moisture, making sure it has a nice sealed connection and it's very tight. Now we're gonna move on to the EMT connector. The connector here, this is a set screw connector and I have three of them here in front of me on the table. All three of these are steel set screw connectors. They are in sizes from half inch up to four inch. So electrical metallic tubing, uh, the set screw connector works just like it says. This particular one um, has two screws. So depending upon the size of the tubing, it'll need additional connectors based on the size. These two have the same functions and uh, same specifications. So it has no, nothing on the inside, just simply a steel coating on the outside. Ones like this that have a feature called insulated throat. So comparing what an insulated throat is to a non-insulated throat, uh, it's just a piece of plastic on the inside which prevents any chafing on the wire, uh, any of the insulation to be scratched or damaged. So it is a, something that's important to prevent uh, any unwanted troubleshooting later on on a job site. So it's something that we recommend. Um, so when you look at this here, uh, the physical characteristics are Simply the only thing is that plastic on the inside. The next connector is the compression connector. As we talked about a lot of these fittings, we have a die cast compression connector as well as a steel. So a compression connector is used to go into a, uh, a box, into a trough, into a panel. So it comes with a lock nut. But as we talked about before with the couplings, this is used without taking it apart sliding in the raceway and tightening it down with a channel lock. So it's a labor saving uh, method, but a compression uh, fitting is used because it has a tighter hold and it's good in a uh, dry location, this particular one here. This is a steel compression connector. Um, once again, all the fittings are from half inch up to four inch. This one here has an insulated throat. That's a feature we talked about before with the set screws. It is nice because it doesn't allow any damage to be done to the conductors when they're being pulled through the raceway. So it is an excellent feature to have. As we look in the other um, compression connectors, the one right here, this particular one, as I look at it, is it actually says right on it that it's rain tight. And you look closely, there is a lock nut and then there is a rubber gasket. That rubber gasket is going to keep water from getting into any of the boxes, making it uh, suitable for wet locations. So this is a compression connector, but it's suitable for a rain tight situation. Next one I have here, once again, it is a feature that is good for a rain tight. So it's a compression connector, suitable for rain tight. You see it has the lock nut and then the rubber gasket, but it also has the insulated throat. So you'll see that's a feature that's interchangeable, could be taken out or used. It's recommended to be used to prevent any damage to the conductors. So this is a EMT compression connector for a wet uh, location, also known as a uh, watertight. So now that we've done that, the next fitting I'd like to show you is the EMT set screw connector. We'll take it and we'll add it to the end of this conduit. So I would simply slide it on the end, and then I would use a screwdriver to tighten it in place. Once again, just living by its name, set screw. As I tighten it down, that screw is driving into the outside of that metal. And that is how you would install an EMT set screw connector. I'm gonna leave that on, and I'm gonna show you how to install an EMT compression connector. Okay, the EMT compression connector, this one also has an insulated throat. So I just have to loosen it. I'm not taking it off. And I would slide it on. Now that it's on, I would try and secure it by hand. Holding it in place. And then I would grab my channel locks and I would tighten it. And you might need a second set of channel locks to make sure it's securely fastened. 
but for the purposes of this, you understand it, the EMT compression connector has to be securely tightened down with channel locks to secure the connection to make sure no moisture gets in and that it doesn't come loose due to vibration. The next fitting we're gonna look at right next to it is a combination fitting. Both of these are combination fittings. A combination fitting means that you have two different raceways that you're joining together. So when looking at this, you can see the characteristics of a compression coupler. And the other end is what's new. So this end here is used for a flexible cable. So we call it flex. So a flex raceway known as Greenfield, this will allow you to connect the Greenfield to a piece of EMT. That way your raceway can continue on its path. So it is a, uh, a method of using it as a coupling for two different raceways. We have an EMT offset connector. As you see the angle here, this is a great uh, fitting because when you're running and installing your conduit, sometimes it's really tight to put in an offset. So this particular connector is a labor saver and also works for short conduits. So this is a um, set screw EMT offset connector. Insulated bushings. The insulated bushings are used when we use raceways as a sleeve. So if we're running alarm wires, running communication wires, and we're not gonna be putting on connectors to go into a box, and we're just using it as a sleeve to protect it, this would go on the outside edge, the very uh, end of the conduit, to protect it from any type of uh, fraying or damage to the wires. So this is how we would use it. We would simply put it over the end of an EMT uh, conduit, and secure it. The pulling L is another fitting that is used uh, when joining the raceways together. So it joins the raceways like a coupling, but it joins it at a 90 degree angle. So it allows you to turn the corner when installing your raceways. But for code reasons, it also allows access to your wiring, which is something that's needed. So this here, you'd remove the cover, and you'd have access to pull your wires out and send them through. So that is a key feature, along with the fact that it is a set screw pulling out. We talked about how to join the raceways with couplings. We also talked about how to install our raceways into a box using connectors. We're now going into how do we hold the, the raceways onto the surface. So we use straps. So we have a total of four straps on the table here today. So the first one here, uh, this one is a half inch EMT one hole strap. If you take a look at it, it's one hole because of the fact that it's got one hole for supporting with a screw. So you drive one screw into the wall or into the structure you're going to be securing your raceway. And they come in sizes from half inch up to four inch. So when we look at this here, it's just a larger version. But this here is a uh, EMT one hole strap. Next one is an EMT two hole strap. So depending upon the installation requirements, uh, depending upon if it's outside in an area that's subject to wind or maybe a little bit more traffic, you might want to go for a two hole strap just for a better uh, securement to the wall or support to the wall. The one hole straps will do, but that's completely a specification up to the contractor. Last, we have the drive strap, which is used for wood surfaces. So similar to a staple, just a little bit larger and used for supporting the conduits. I would now like to show you how some of the EMT fittings are installed. This is an EMT set screw connector. This is the steel version. So I'm gonna remove the lock nut from the threads and bring it over to a box that has the knockout removed. And we're going to secure it to the box using the lock nut. Make sure the set screw is facing out. I'm now going to install a piece of EMT into the connector, the set screw connector. As I place it in, I push all the way in until it stops. And then I would tighten down the set screw onto the EMT. Very important to make sure it's securely fastened. Next, we have the EMT die cast coupling. 
We're going to install it on this raceway. Make sure your screws are facing out and then we're going to tighten the set screw. Now we're going to install the second EMT, piece of EMT, into the set screw coupling. Place it all the way up, and then I would tighten it down. Once again, making sure it is a tight connection. So now I've officially installed the EMT coupling. One set screw is holding one raceway, and the second screw is holding on to the second. This is the EMT pulling elbow, which is used to turn 90 degrees. I'm gonna install the pulling elbow onto the EMT, and we're going to secure it and hold it in place by tightening down the set screw. We remove these screws. We will have access to our conductors in the raceway. This access point allows me to pull my wires out and then send them in the opposite direction. This is a one hole EMT strap that we're going to use today to secure it. And this is an example of the fittings that are used to build an EMT raceway. For more information about Topex products, please visit our website.